I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am your host, Bill Cortright. And I'm here with the one and only super millennial, David Barreto, giving us his very special millennial perspective. Hi, special millennial. How are you doing today? Hi, special boomer. How are you doing? I'm I'm doing doing great. I'm booming it, baby. (laughs) Booming away. This week, our topic is creation. And today's Connection Thursday, we're going to discuss the echo of creation. Have you ever heard of this? No. And you really need to know it because this episode is for you, David. So as we've discussed this week, creation is the process of bringing something into existence. We discussed in Tuesday's Health Huddles in part one, the process of creating a successful weight loss that to lose weight, keep it off. You must create a shift in your health life category and create a new self-authored identity. To bring anything new into your reality, you must change your perception. This is the programming that is the filter of how you see the world. In yesterday's Meeting of the Minds, we do not negotiate with terrorists. We discuss how the ego is a dream killer. And the moment you make a decision that you matter, everything begins to change. In today's Connection Thursday, I'd like to address the challenges of change and staying on your mountain course toward what you desire. So many times, well, I'll say most times when someone is in the process of creation and they're self-authoring a new identity, whether this is a new habit, creating a new business, or increasing your wealth, or even up-leveling yourself in personal development, there is a point where the old identity and the old programs and the ego will create an echo. An echo is the repetition of sound caused by the reflection of sound waves. An echo, while in the process of creation, is the old vibration or the state of the old programmed identity. And many times this echo takes place when you are in the process of changing something. Again, this is creation. And you happen to go back into your old environment or someone that was close to the old identity, such as a family member, a close friend who hasn't seen you in a while, comes to visit. The echo is why holidays with family can be very challenging. You with me so far? Because I'm going to bring a lot of clarity to this. Yeah, How is this hitting you? How is this touching you so far? No, I think it's uh, the, the last part that you said was the, the resonating part, the people who haven't seen you before. Or um, for me, that that's the interesting one because I almost have to prepare myself for them, like seeing a new person, you know, because they they go back into it exactly how I was before, and I they they are more comfortable with that individual than I am. And that's what we're talking about today, because when we are hit with the old program self, we may revert back to our old behavior, and then later catch ourselves wondering what the hell. The echo can be activated at any time, but most times the echo takes place at the six-month testing period. This is when you can have imposter syndrome, and an echo is very strong during the first year of a shift into stage four of development self-authored mind. That first year, the echo can be very strong, and I'll talk about it, but here's a warning for everybody. That echo can take place even if it's 35 years later. So I left my hometown when I joined the military. And even though I would visit the first few years, soon I would never go back. It would be decades. Well, a few years ago, I was doing a large seminar in Minnesota, and my PR person thought it would be cool to return to my hometown. At the time, the city was building the what's called the River Bend Trail. This is a scenic trail that was set up to enjoy nature and become active. And they were raising money to build a pavilion. To raise the money, I would come in and I would do a lecture. I would do a book signing and speak at the high school. There were newspapers and news stations covering and promoting the events. It was a huge success. We raised thousands of dollars. But for me, it was very activating. And 
No one but myself knew this. I didn't tell anybody. I may have told you over the, over time, but I didn't tell anybody. I never talked about it publicly. First of all, the city, coming back to the city was one thing, right? The school where I attended was another. There were strong echoes from those hallways that were there. I graduated in 1979, and since that time, the middle school I had attended was now the high school. Now, the echo that was really strong was in that school that was the high school where I was speaking, the middle school, because that was the school I attended when I was brought back to my grandparents after my mother had taken me back. After fourth grade, my mother went to court and basically returned me to hell. But as that imploded, I was brought back to my grandparents for seventh grade and beyond, and this was a school I would return. Echoes vibrating. Then the old high school, now the middle school, would actually be the site where the auditorium is where I would do the big lecture. More echoes were rolling now. The echoes are really getting loud. Then I was taken to the old paper mill. It was now shut down. It no longer existed. But I was shown where my grandfather had had the industrial accident where acid exploded, burning 90% of his body. I was shown exactly where it happened. Here, the echoes and tears started to come. But for my ego, Barry, it would be my PR person's, remember her, right? I loved her. Mm -hmm. Big surprise. What was the surprise? Well, the house I grew up in happened to be on the market for sale. And the realtor, along with local news crews, had made arrangements for me to tour the house and do an interview live from the house. Now the echoes were screaming. No one knew how activated I was. I literally didn't sleep for several nights after that. I was letting go, shutting Barry down. And it t- and this is something that has take that that's 35 years later and decades since I had shifted. So the echo can come back very quickly in certain situations. Mm-hmm. And that echo can absolutely derail you because I started feeling like I wanted to go back to eating back to it was a weird it was dark by the way everybody it was very dark and I never talked about it because I dealt with it then I had to go do a huge huge uh you were at the the you were there at that workshop right I had to go do that after that and nobody even knew Mm -hmm. so do you understand how that happens yeah I think that's a right now for me the interesting part about the the echo part is that it's still fresh enough to feel like I'm still getting over it, you know? So it feels like almost <clears throat> like it's supposed to happen because it was not too long ago. But it's interesting how there's things from way, way before that when that pops up, that's more uncomfortable. So now that I'm aware, like like you're saying, is that it happens. This is you your time. Position, it's not like, oh, yeah. wait 10, 15 years. It happens quick. No, that first year of a shift. And that's the first thing I told you was now you got to live in that identity. Mm-hmm. And this is where it goes. So what causes the echo is very simple. It's a misalignment of realities. So one reality is set by the old program self. This identity that I had saw the world through the subjective filter of abuse, right? And then my true self, my self-authored identity had a whole different view of the world. And neither of these views were in objective reality, which was, it's 35 years later. So you can see how the echo can can be screaming. Now, David is going through this process now, as is a couple people in the community. Sandra's going through it. Pablo's going through it. And Teresa's going through it in the community now. Felix, Coach Felix from the community, went through this last year. See, the echo takes place after you've created change. You arrived, the goal's accomplished. The process of self-authoring a new identity is complete. And now you must be in the new identity. Let's say you lose 50 pounds. That's the goal. You self-authored a new health program. Diet and exercise are now part of your identity. Now you must live the identity. The echo is the energy, the vibration from the old identity. 
This is fat David, which gets activated by those who still hold the old perception of who they believe David is. This creates a misalignment of objective reality. David is in great shape. And their subjective reality that David loves to drink and eat ho-hos. <laughs> so it's this, this is, this creates it. And what does that do? It activates you. So you actually talked about this a little bit um, a while back, but tell me a little bit, cause you didn't know what I was talking about. What, what you're going through this year. Now you have the identity. Does the fat David come in there? Does he come in and say, well, maybe I should be dieting or maybe I'm not this, or you look at the scale, maybe I'm too heavy. Watch out. That's the echo. Talk to me. You know, I think I find it kind of interesting because those things pop up and then my ego starts to use it as a, a, you need to overcompensate. So I find myself trying to make things difficult or harder. And that was what made me fail in the beginning. Every single time was making it so difficult. So anytime that like fat David, like right now, the scale's supposed to be going up. So the scale's going up and it's like, hey, you remember that thing going up? You remember what happened last time? And now it's completely different, obviously. But my ego is like, you need to get strict. You need to diet hard. And it makes me want to overcompensate and go the opposite way, which is completely against my goals right now. That's so the echo. How my ego is trying to say, hey, diet, yep. you don't want Fat David coming back. It's like, well, he's not coming back. You're just trying to derail me from my new goals because calling me fat anymore doesn't really do anything. <laughs> because that's the echo. Now you are experiencing it. I know, I know that Paolo's experience, anybody who's shifted is experiencing this, right? So here's what happens. The echo activates a conflict. And the conflict moves us into the want of control. And this stresses the individual out. Now, this drives behavior to control the external world so their inner world will be okay. Now, many people who are working on creating something new in their lives will actually avoid, thus attempt to control the external world so their internal world will be okay. They may avoid family get-togethers if on a diet. They'll avoid situations with tempting foods, or they may not go on a trip so they can control the external world, thus soothe their internal world. And this is a huge mistake. I told you this episode was for you. Yeah. Right? <laughs> See, here's what happens. When you attempt to avoid the external world to persevere to persevere your inner world, you are setting yourself up for a fall. See, you went on a diet. Let's say at the start of the year, you lost all your weight. You are enjoying your new body and you love your new routine. You love your diet and you look forward to exercising. Everything is rolling. You have shifted. But you do avoid your old girlfriends that used to meet every week for drinks. Then there's this birthday party. You're invited. Everybody's expecting you to be there. Your internal world is activated. I can't go. They'll have unhealthy foods and drinks, and everyone will expect me to have birthday cake. So you avoid it. This is you trying to control your internal world, which is your ego, the fear programs activated, in an attempt to control your external world. You live in a world where there's only food on your diet. <laughs> Good luck with that. This happens all the time. This is detrimental for the simple reason. You did not bring the conflict to a resolution. Thus, down the road, at some point, you will be in a situation where there will not be healthy food and there's a good chance the echo will turn into a scream and take you down a bad road because you will eat and you fail to deal with your inner world, which is the conflict. But the ego told you, this is the funny thing. Now listen to your ego. Remember, it's a terrorist. It's a dream killer. The ego told you, you were controlling your life by avoiding these parties, by avoiding these situations, mm -hmm. right? Your fall will cause you to fall into regret. You'll feel guilty that you cheated because you failed to control your external world. And there are many dieters who actually lose the weight, but fall into this trap and let the echo snap the old identity back into existence because this can start a very big roll from the mountain and back into the valley. Did that make sense to you? Are you understanding this a little bit now? Yeah, it's interesting because uh, 
recently I went to Disney. Um, I believe it was last week and all last year I didn't go because I was like, there's nothing I can have. There's nothing I can do. So I avoided the hell out of it. And this time Vanessa's friend invited us. She said, oh, let's go. She's like, yeah, well, what about food? I said, I know what's in food. I have my fitness pal. I'll get the smartest options. I turned on my watch. So I tracked how much calories I was burning. And then if I over ate, you know, quote unquote, I can compensate through calorie burn and I can track as much as I can. Sure enough, didn't overeat, got a good amount of protein, and I enjoyed the hell out of my time without feeling guilty. Before, I didn't think I can do that. Now, I can, but like you said, when she was like, hey, I know you probably don't want to go, but my friend invited us to Disney. That was an echo for me because it was immediately like, there you go. You cannot go because there's nothing at Disney. Sure enough, last year I found out you could diet anywhere. (laughs) But see, that's the conflict. So... What happens is she asks you to go, right? It activates the conflict. Now you're in conflict, right? Mm -hmm. If you avoid going because you want to protect your, your your inner reality, right? So you avoid the external reality of going to Disney. You have not taken the conflict to resolution. Yeah. By looking at the conflict and saying, oh, I can respond to this. I can eat there and that. You take the conflict to resolution and... Fat David's dead. You see, yeah. it takes some time to kill him. You know what I mean? <laughs> sounds horrible, right? Strong, <laughs> he's a strong, he's a strong guy. But you see, that's what it is. See, the key is quite simple. To deal with the echo, you must deal with whatever is taking place in your inner world so you can then deal with the external world, right? Mm-hmm. That's what you did. You're activated. First thing that happens, I can't go there. That's that's your inner world. And so when you deal with that, guess what you could do? You could go to Disney because you can deal with the external world. So to try to control the external world, this is why step seven of stress mastery is finding the now. It's always moving out of your subjective reality into objective reality of what is. The subjective reality is saying, you can't go. You can't do this. There's no good foods there. Shh. Quiet. Quiet down there, Nelson. I got this. And you go in, and the objective reality is, I got a fitness pal, and I can do this, and you can do that. That's responding, taking the conflict to resolution. Now, if you don't do that, that conflict sits there waiting, waiting for you to be in a situation where you're not going to get the right food. And it because you haven't brought the conflict to resolution, you don't know how to deal with the external reality when the food isn't present. Yeah, Does this all make sense now? Yeah, and the cool thing is that that, example was set for Vanessa too because she was like afterwards because man so we could have done a lot more stuff last year I said, yeah but I'm glad we did it because we didn't know we could you know now that we know we can that you know going literally and end up going anywhere anywhere guys yeah exactly because i acted like i didn't know that but i watched you literally travel with me all the time on the road across the country (laughs) and always was able to stick to it i don't know why i thought that was something that i couldn't do like fat david couldn't do it because that's what the ego told you right remember the ego is a terrorist it's a dream killer. It wants to sac- it wants to sacrifice you you and everything you want for its own selfish programming. So here's the other thing I think is an important message. We must learn how to live in both internal and external worlds. You cannot say, I'm gonna go within, I'm gonna be the spiritual guru, and I'm just gonna take care of my internal world. Well. We must live in the external world. You cannot avoid or stop conflict. It's impossible. And you cannot try to control the external world. So your internal world will be happy. You see? This is what people say. Well, I just won't go there. I'll avoid this. I'll avoid. No, no. That is not. That is not controlling. You just you're trying to keep your internal world. You're trying to be this Buddhist. You're trying to be this 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 identity, right? But you're trying to. You can't be in the world. Yeah, it didn't so, work out for Michael Singer. <laughs> yes, yes, that's a great example, actually, right? Yeah. So, for instance, let me try to bring an easy example. So, if you're drinking a cup of coffee and you're worrying about a paper that you might have due, you are in separation and you will be stressed out. Your external and internal world are in conflict. External world, you're drinking a coffee. Internal world, you're worried about the paper. 
You see? Now, mm -hmm. but if you were to slow down, pause, and simply adjust your state from judgment, worry, to response, and you adjust the experiences, what happens? You then experience the coffee. You can experience its flavor, its warmth, the cup, touching your lips, tasting it. Now the internal world then is in alignment with your external world and you find the now. There's no separation. And it's the same if the internal world is upset. Let's say you're activated and you're frustrated. And you, when you're frustrated, what do you do? Your internal world's frustrated. You create a still point. You learn to let go. You allow the energy activated to pass through the heart. You can now respond to the external world connected to the internal world. This is finding it now. That's the process, right? So you can see how the echo is always going to try to pull you up, but it's about having your, your worlds match. And that's mm -hmm. moving into objective reality out of your subjective reality. And like I said, you might, you remember, you have an identity, David. You have self-authored it. It's still an identity. What happened to me when I went back to my hometown? I had both identities activated and neither one of them in objective reality. <laughs> it's 35 years later. You see, that's creating separation. That's when people get really messed up, right? But they don't know what's happening. And next week, our topic is actually detachment. And I'm going to get very deep into this, into this kind of subject of the external, internal um, reality and wants of control and everything, because that's where detachment comes in. But for today, I just want to stay with this a little bit because you're going through it. And so many people I know are going, Chelsea's going through it. People are going through it. I'm just curious, uh, do you understand what we talk about when we talk about the echo now? Yeah, for sure. I think that's a... It, definitely was able to label and kind of identify the uncomfortable feeling that I think that many people get, especially like I just said, I get it, but I didn't know what it was called. I just thought it was normal. And I guess it is normal, but without the awareness, it's almost like a sneak attack. <laughs> terrorist. The terrorists are telling you. <laughs> Nicole, thank you for the terrorist because it really is, really. So I got the echo from... Um, Paul Selig's latest book. I don't know if you guys ever listen to Paul Selig, but he is a channeler and the guides that he's doing. I've been, that's one of my, my more spiritual studies. I've been studying for the last decade. His teachers are amazing. And they talk about the echo and that's where I got the echo from, right? It's this echo and the echo is a vibration. And so when we look at echo, it's the repetition of sound, right? Reflection, but it's a vibration. So when you move into a new identity, create a new habit, even when you have self-authored it and shifted, there's still that vibration that's left behind. The challenge with the echo is it gets activated when another comes into your life that don't know the new identity. So their perception, their subjective reality is still locked into who they believe you are, how they believe you should act, and they will try to pull you into their reality because they're uncomfortable that you're not in a reality. And this can cause the ego to have that echo. And it's a remnant. Even though you've let go of programs, it's energy. You can't hold on to an identity for, what are you, 20-some 20, 20 years, 25 years, and then expect that, oh, it's gone in one year. Well, yeah, you shifted, but you have to be aware. They have to be aware of that. And that's what happens. And I don't care who you are. If you haven't been around someone in a long time and you go back and you've changed, you have to be aware because they're going to be uncomfortable and they're going to do whatever it takes to create an, an action, a conflict to drive you into their reality. Not on purpose. They just don't know. So tell me some of the experiences that you've been going through since it's been a year now and now it's done. It's been this year. We're, we're already in the third month of you in this new identity. What's the challenge has been? Well, the, the one thing I think it's uh, cool because now that I can see it, I think uh, one of them was um, I used to have a lot of friends and stuff asked to work out with me and I would kind of say no um, because I thought that one, I'd probably get judged or two, it would derail me from actually 
you know, making progress. I didn't think I can change my habit routine, leave my home gym, things like that. So I'm actually doing that now and going to meet up with a bunch of friends and realizing that's a way that I can help people kind of, you know, inspire them rather than kind of, no, I got my own thing going. Um, And then being able to kind of go out and socialize on like days off before I would not do it because there was nothing to do um, besides eat, drink and, and stay up all night. Right. That was what I thought. Now we're going out, we're finding the things that kind of fit into the lifestyle, but also still being able to go out with old friends and kind of fit into what they would do. So like when we would go out, they would get drinks and stuff like that. I go out, I'm the guy who orders the diet Red Bull, you know, and things like that. But we plan it around cheat days. We plan around things like that. So I'm allowed to have more flexibility within it, but also it's cool to be the example, you know, now they know to ask me on Saturdays. Now they know not to invite me out on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, and I think one of the challenges that I'm actually getting over with now is that me and Vanessa have synced up so well with it is that now her friends who didn't know me that she wants to go and hang out with, um, they don't have the old identity to go off of. Yeah, see, that's always true. Yeah. So now it's cool to be able to establish myself as this person and not have to deal with those echoes with these new people because they're like, oh, no, he doesn't drink. He does this. He does that. And it's it's interesting because I find old friends are turning into those new people. See, that's what I had when I went in the military. (laughs) I went in the military. I didn't have any. I I, I just, I didn't know anybody. Mm -hmm. So I just took the new identity in there and there were no echoes. The echoes would come when I doubted myself about something, right? That's when Mm -hmm. Barry would come in there and say, you know, you're kind of like still a fat kid. Do you really think you could do this? Uh, Yeah, I can do this. You know, (laughs) but he's always going to be around. Now, is there any other life categories that besides your health has been a big one you've talked about? What about career, finance, and the relationship, the development categories? Has any of those that you've seen the echo trying to pull you out? Um, the, The one that I think is the big one would be the career one because it's the one that I have to stay on top of the most because I feel like since I'm being so um, efficient in all the categories, right? It's like, okay, well, you can go to sleep a little later. You don't have to wake up and start working early. Like you're a business owner. Like that's the thing that used to pop up all the time where I used to play video games at three, four, five in the morning and say, I'll be up at 10. It's fine. That one is the one that I think my ego is trying to use the most. And that's the one that I'm having fun as weird as it sounds, overcoming, because no, I'm going to sleep, eight o'clock, start to wind down and go, and to hear him not shut off until I go to sleep yes, is interesting because that's the longest he is active. Normally, it used to be in the morning. Ah, you shouldn't have went to sleep so late. You shouldn't have done this, this. Now, it's literally from the time I start to wind down until I do like my night practices to really you know let go of the day a journal do all that stuff until i do that he talks so much because i think that's the one where he wants me to slip the most because the other ones have been pretty easy i mean i've I've learned a lot of the tricks so now it's like oh no you can relax this is the whole point well think about how that little terrorist will work though let's say he gets you to stay up late then what happens kind of screws up your work what else is a screw up starts to screw Mm -hmm. up your health starts to screw up your sleep it starts to screw this up and before you know it the little terrorist we do not negotiate with terrorists nelson just gonna tell you right now the thing is is that it seems so innocent like yes a little later like you can dude go ahead and enjoy yourself like i used to think like that before and now that i'm so on top of everything it makes me feel even more justified like of course you can what the hell like but that's why I'm ahead. It's because I'm sticking to it. So it's a back and forth kind of. Well, this is the echo that you go through all year. So this is the new identity, right? You just shifted it. Last year's different because you're in a process of working it, building it, self-authoring it. Once it's self-authored, then you have to live in it for a while. And even if, like I said in my story, even after you lived in it in a while, there are circumstances that can really activate it because I left that town with my new identity. So it wasn't like I had to deal with anything after I left. I was gone. 
And there was no more old identity because I didn't talk about it, things like that. But then when you go back, that's where activation comes in. So you got to watch this. This is, this is very important. We are always creating. And so if you're avoiding anything, it's the ego. That is a state of restriction based energy fear. Even if you think you're avoiding this, so you don't do that. That is you trying to control what's activated in your inner environment by trying to control the outer environment so you don't do it. You can mm-hmm. see how it works. Your outer world, it's so subtle, like you said. Yet, it's, uh, you got to, you, that's why you, the skills you are setting, remember, we're always in decision. And you want to create those conscious program skills that drive you into a decision that keeps you on the mountain. Those are the skills of how you set the day, close the day, diet, exercise, how you deal with conflict resolution, how you deal with things. But if you don't set those skills, well, you wouldn't be in stage four if you didn't set those skills. So you have to set those skills against stage four. But those that are like changing right now and they're coming up to that six month test, the echo will scream at six months. That was the lady we talked about. That was Alex's client. That echo screamed loud. It says, hey, just like you were hearing, I got to take a break. You've done really well. You deserve a break. You've done this well. You sacrificed for this long. You lost all this weight, 100 pounds. You need to take a break. Yep, took a break all the way back and gained 123 pounds. <laughs> That's what happens. I don't even say it to be funny. It's just the, the ego is a terrorist, man. It's a dream killer. But you have to, you're stronger than the ego. You just have to be aware of how it functions. Yeah, I think that was the thing. Learning the tricks, because this is one that he's trying to do new tricks that it's like, okay, that was slick. What's next? And and I think if you could turn it into that kind of learning opportunity rather than beating yourself up as a, why do I keep having these thoughts or why can't I shut off my ego? Like, you're not going to win that battle. Might as well enjoy it. You know, learn something from it. That poor ego. Poor Nelson. (laughs) That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. You can join us on this mission by simply like, share, subscribe. The links are right below the show notes. As always, until next time, stay inspired.